to this week's episode of The Savvy Author. My name is Clara Rose. I'm a literary consultant, creator of the Be Savvy brand, and I'm your host for this show today. If you've not been with us before, I want to be the first to say welcome to the show. We invite you to come back every week, same time, same place, to learn everything you need to know about being a savvy author. Sometimes we have interviews with other savvy authors. Sometimes we look at books, but most of the time we're just doing some good old fashioned education. We'd love to have you join us. Of course, if you've been here before to watch the show, welcome back, my friend. Today we're going to talk about a topic that I actually just had a question on this week from one of my viewers, so I wanted to cover it. I've talked about it in the past. If you've been following me for a couple of years, you may have heard this before, but of course we're always updating and changing things, so hang around. We'd love for you to be here anyway. All right, today we're going to talk about one of the pieces of the three phases of publishing. And of course, the three phases of getting your book out to the world is the brainstorm blueprint, which is your analyze, brainstorm, and blueprint process of getting all of that content out of your head and onto paper where we can do something with it. It's that planning process. And then the write, edit, format stage, which is the second phase. This is where the work, the bulk of the work actually gets done. This is where we actually write, we edit, and we format for publication. And then, of course, the final phase of getting your book to the world is actually getting your book published and out there. So we talk about publishing, how to launch your book effectively, and, of course, selling because what is the point of your book if you're not actually going to sell it? Getting it into the hands of people out there. Today we're just going to talk about something that falls in one of those categories, and that is the second stage, the second phase of your book. And that falls into the writing, editing, and getting it ready stage. Mostly it falls there. But we're really going to be talking about ghostwriting, versus co-writing or co-writing versus ghostwriting. So what is the difference between co-writing a book and ghostwriting a book? And which one could possibly be right for you? So we're going to break that down so you understand the difference between co-writing and ghostwriting. You may have an idea already, but we're going to break that down and go through it piece by piece. Now, many people who are trying to write their first book, especially, they sit down at a typewriter, computer, pen and paper, or whatever it is that you, your preferred method of writing, and they just start writing. I've got an idea for a book, and they just start writing it. It works for some people, but mostly they're missing the process that helps them be successful, and they often end up frustrated with writer's block, writing themselves into a corner, lots of issues along the way. And those are the people who will seek out someone like myself, um, a literary consultant, book coach, whatever you want to call us, and say, hey, I've been working on my book for 10 years or five years or whatever it is, and I really think I'm stuck and I need some help. Or they've gotten the manuscript written, they think, and they don't know what to do next. And those are the people who end up giving me a call. All those people, we treat them exactly the same way through the process, even though they've already written that book or they've already got a bulk of their material out. We still start at the beginning, which is where we need to start. All right, so let's first break it down, the differences so that you understand them. What is co-writing? So co-writing process is really brainstorm and blueprint, collaborative writing, and publishing. So the truth is that most people can write their own book if they have the right help. So the co-writing process just has three steps to it. And we're going to walk through them one at a time so you have an understanding of what each of those steps looks like. All right, the very first step, no matter what we're doing, but in the co-writing process is the brainstorm and blueprint. Now this is the a proven system for creating a solid outline for your book. Now, some people call it a book build. In the industry, it's often referred to as a book build, and that's fine. The truth is a solid outline or book build, if you'll call it that, is foundational for a successful book. Don't try to write your book without doing this. Now, if you have already written your book, we are still going to, and a good literary consultant or book coach will still do this with you, pull it apart and make sure that you have a good outline that you followed. Otherwise, you may have meandered from topic to topic in a way that doesn't actually make sense to the people who are going to buy your book. 
Right? That is the point. You want to start at the beginning and end at the end, not in a way that makes sense to you, but in a way that makes sense to the person who's actually going to be consuming the material. Now, it's super easy if you're writing a book that maybe is about yourself and you're following a timeline. Chronological stuff is easy to do, right? You start at one place and you end at another and it happens sequentially, chronologically, if you will. If you're writing something that doesn't fall chronologically, then you're thinking themes or ideas. So you're following a different path and what might make sense in your mind might not necessarily make sense to the mind of the reader, the person that you would like to have buy your book, consume your material, the, the difference that you're trying to make in the world for somebody else, that content. So I always use my last book. Pretty soon I have an, another one that will hit the, the shelf, and so I won't have to refer to this one all the time, but Eight Ways to Mind Your Own Business. When we created this, this is strategy and mindset for the new entrepreneur, so it is not chronologic necessarily, but it is start to finish on how to build a business, right? So you ne we needed to start with the information that somebody who'd never had a business before might not understand. So we started with, you know, number one, what comes first, All right? Number two, what comes second, right? We're going to talk passion, and then we're going to talk about creation, creative matters. Then we're going to talk about the business matters, formation of the business, things of that nature. So it is done sequentially in a way that makes sense for the people that we, we actually created the book for, right? Someone wanting to start a business who had never started a business before. So it's Business 101, the basics of starting your own business. So that was an easy one as well because it may, we know that it makes sense to the person who probably doesn't know how to start a business anyway, but we created it for those people knowing how to start a business from A to Z, start to finish, right? Now, themes are a little bit more difficult. So when you pull apart a, a themed book, which is full of ideas about what you want to tell your audience, those themes need to make sense in the mind of the person reading it. If they build on top of each other, then the themes need to be in the book in, in that way. If they don't build on top of each other, there still needs to be a flow, and we find that flow in the brainstorm and blueprint process. So if it's already done, the book's already done, the manuscript's already done, pull it apart and look at each of the individual chapters as individual pieces. That is my advice if you've already written it. If you haven't already written it, the co-writing process absolutely needs to start with that process. Getting your ideas into an outline that you'll follow as you co-write your book. Okay, what is the next step? This is the collaborative writing process. So sometimes it's called developmental editing, which is what I call it. It's the process that we use to actually create the content within the book. So developmental editor editing considers the entire book based on the outline, and it, you create a cohesive, memorable message based on that. So how might that, how might that work? Well, in my particular business, we start with our outline and then we'll take chapter one or the preface or the introduction where we usually we're gonna start with those. Sometimes we start with chapter one and then it's just a process of the writer, you, writing that piece. So starting with chapter one, what did you say in the brainstorm and blueprint? In that outline, what did you say was gonna go into chapter one? And then you start writing chapter one. When you're done with that, the writing piece of it, you're going to send it over to your editor, your developmental editor, and they're going to actually go through it and edit it based on what you said was going to be in the book in the outline. And if you said this is what's going in chapter one, a good developmental editor is going to look at that and say, hmm, yes, indeed, that was what actually ended up being in chapter one. And then an editing process, of course. And it could just be grammar, it could be sentence structure. Sometimes people will s to write things the way that they speak them, but that's not necessarily always the way that we read them. And so your editor will move those pieces around so the grammar is better from a reading standpoint. And then, of course, spelling, you know, 
punctuation, all of those things that need to be corrected happen at the same time. So once that one chapter, that one chapter is edited, it comes back to you for your review. So this is your opportunity to say, oh yes, that's exactly what I was trying to say. My editor just made it pretty, <laughs> made it read better, made it sound better. It just cleans it up and that's developmental editing. The process really is that simple. Somebody to say, I know what you're trying to say. Here's how you want to say that so that it is more readable. Once you say, yes, I'm happy with this chapter, you send it back to your editor who cleans it up and creates final clean copy for that chapter. Just that one chapter, not the whole book yet, just that one chapter. Now, not every literary consultant, not every book coach works in the same way. The reason that I do it in this way is it makes each of those pieces, those little capsules of content, if you will, it makes them more mobile. We can move them around. So it can be, you know, I thought chapter two was going to be about X, but as I work through the book, I'm finding, especially in themes, I think this is going to fit better over here. And you and your editor can make that decision and just move that piece. You know, we just rename the chapter and we move it. And it, so that gives us that kind of freedom. If you wait until the book is, compl is complete, manuscript is all done and edited in one piece, it's much more difficult to move things around effectively. So that's why I do it that way. But it's super important that you're getting through the developmental editing process one chapter at a time, in my way of thinking. Two things happen that are super exciting. Once you see what your editor has to say about chapter one, you learn from that process, right? You say, oh, yeah, I probably shouldn't use that word in every single sentence or every single paragraph in my, my book. Clearly, I'm repetitive with that word. And you're honing your craft. If you were here the last couple of weeks, I did talk about honing your craft and that practice that you become better and cleaner and tighter in your writing as you go. So that is a beautiful thing that comes out of the co-writing process. Then the other thing is you get faster. You get faster at recognizing, because remember, we've just written the one chapter one, right? So you won't make as many of the same mistakes as you move on to chapter two. So then chapter two, you get it written based on the outline, send it to your editor, who does a developmental edit on it. That is the actual co-writing or collaborative writing piece. We work through the entire book together, and then when we're ready, when we're happy with the pieces, the pieces come together and create the manuscript, and we move forward with it for publication. Of course, there's final edit, you know, formatting, those kinds of things that happen, but the collaborative writing piece, that's how that happens. All right, let's move on. I don't want to run out of time today, and I have lots to say. Get published. Get published. Everybody wants to get published. It's important to understand your publishing options, though. So this is step three of the co-writing process, co-writing package. The truth is not every book is great for self-publishing, but many are. So understanding the benefits of both of those things really is beneficial to you in this process. If you're co-writing with somebody, but your book is um, something that's a good fit for self-publishing, Absolutely. Or hybrid publishing, those might be great options to keep more of your dollars in your own pocket. Remember, as a traditionally published author, the first person who's going to get a piece of your pie is your publishing house. And then, of course, your agent is going to get a piece of your pie as well. And then the royalties, which is the smallest piece, is going to come to you, the author. Self-publish, of course, kind of flips that because you don't have a publisher. You get the bigger piece of the pie and the people who produce your book get a smaller piece of the pie. Hybrid, of course, is somewhere in the middle and is the sweet spot for most of your books, in my opinion. Now, if it is needs to be interior full, full color, low content, some of those kinds of things, those are often better done through a, a traditional publishing house. But understanding what's best for you and your project really is going to make a difference for you. All right, let's move on. What is ghostwriting? Now, most of us have an idea of what ghostwriting is, and we, I want to talk briefly about what that is. But 
If you'll notice, ghostwriting happens much the same way. We still need to go through a brainstorm and blueprint process. We still need to do a collaborative messaging, if you will. We still need to get it published. Now, the truth is, of course, that most people can write their own book, but some people don't have the time or indeed just don't even have the desire to do so. If you are a busy professional, you might think, I, I, I could totally pull off writing a book, but I just can't find the time in my day to make this happen. You might be a great candidate for a ghostwriter. So a ghostwriter is actually the person who's going to do the bulk of the work for you. But as you'll see, as we talk through this process, they are not going to do everything and you are still going to need to be involved. After all, it's your book, isn't it? All right, let's talk through the pieces. Of course, the brainstorm and blueprint is still the place that we're going to start. So the same process is used for all projects because it is a proven system that creates the solid outline. And the truth is, of course, that solid outline or the book build is foundational for the success of your book. I'm always saying, don't try to write a book without that piece. Now, not every ghostwriter out there uses the same process. Many ghostwriters will just take your idea, your content, and they'll do the research, they'll do the writing, um, and produce everything, and then just give you a final produced piece. That is usually a little bit more expensive of a process than what I offer. It's also less likely that it's going to sound like you, the author, sound like you, the writer. Now, if you're all right with that, then that's a perfectly acceptable way to get a book out there with your name on it. And we all know that having your own book or books with your name on it as author is a great way to create influence for yourself. It is a wonderful way to organically generate leads for your business, your ministry, your cause, or your brand. So if, if that's what you'd like to do, that's a perfectly acceptable way to have your book written for you. Ghost writing, most of the time, their name isn't going to appear anywhere. Nobody's going to actually know that you didn't create it yourself. Now, a ghostwriter who uses the process that I use works a little differently. Of course, we start with the brainstorm and blueprint process so that the outline is solid. That's absolutely important in my way of thinking. But the next piece that is a little bit different in my business structure or some of the people that I've worked with is the collaborative messaging. Now, it's just like collaborative writing, except someone does the writing for you. You're not the person doing the bulk of the creative work. So a talented ghostwriter is going to be able to capture your voice and capture your message without it sounding like them in your book. So the truth is, ghostwriting still requires many hours of collaboration to capture your voice and your message. After all, this is your message, right? We want not just to sound like you, but we want the message to truly be your message. I think this is super important when your business is attached to your book. Like if you have a book, if I just helped people start businesses, I would want my book that I wrote about starting a business to sound just like me. This one, in fact, does, at least the portion that I wrote. My co-author, her portion sounds like her, which is intentional. We, we want that to be true. If your business, ministry, cause, or brand is attached to you personally, you're going to want someone to read that book and say, oh my gosh, it sounded just like you. That's the gold in ghostwriting in this way. That time is spent to actually hear your voice, hear your message, and capture you and put it in your book so your book actually sounds like you. Now, this process I just mentioned, it's going to take hours of your time as well because we move through the process just like when we did the, the co-writing package together. Instead of you doing the writing and sending it to me for developmental editing or your editor for developmental editing, you're just going to have an interview. So I interview based on the outline in the brainstorm and blueprint process. So it's like, all right, today we're working on chapter one and you said in your blueprint, this is what is gonna be in chapter one. Talk me through that. Then I just need to hear or your editor needs to hear 
everything in your voice that's going to go in chapter one. And then, and we record those. And when that's over, we're going to, I'm going to sit down and actually create that chapter, write that chapter for you, ghost write that chapter for you, making it sound just like you. That's the ghostwriting process that I'm talking about. It's different than the traditional, I understand, but this is where we capture your voice and your message super authentically, which is good for you and your business, my friend. Okay, so we work through that process one chapter at a time. So see how it's going to still take many hours of your time, not as much as if you were writing, but I still need to capture that, that voice, capture that message on those one hour calls, which they usually are. So if you have 20 chapters, there's 20 hours right there. Now, once I've written the chapter and I send it to the author or send it over to you, then you're going to read it and say, yes, I loved it, or I want to change this, or that's not exactly what I was thinking. You know, I misspoke, whatever it is. And then we do a little bit of the back and forth for editing. When we're both happy with chapter one, I clean it up, send you a copy, final clean copy, and we move on to chapter two. So do you see a pattern here? It's much like the co-writing process. The real difference is you're not doing the writing. So you don't have those hours of trying to get that content created. Somebody creates that content for you. Okay. And then publish, right? Nothing changes there. We still want to get our book published. So the same options are usually available when you're using Ghostwriter or a writing service as when you're trying to self-publish, trying to hybrid publish. All those same options are still there. It's just important for you to understand your options. And the truth is, most every book is great for self-publishing, but most... Not every great, <laughs> I can't even speak today. Not every book is great for self-publishing, but most can benefit from it. We already talked about that, so I don't need to go back into that. But Okay, so that's kind of a wrap-up of the differences between co-writing and ghostwriting. So the question that you just need to ask yourself is, do I have the, t the bandwidth, do I have the ability, which... I think most people, if you're in business, you do have the ability to create a book for yourself, to actually do the writing piece. But if you feel like it's outside of your scope or time doesn't permit you to do that, ghostwriting can be a great option for you. Just keep in mind that it is going to take you some time to get through the process of getting it out of your head. The exception being if, is if you hire a ghostwriter who will do all of that work for you. The product that you end up with is just going to be the, a different product. And as long as you're okay with that, then that might be a good option for you. It truly is about the power of understanding what your options are, deciding how much help it is that you really do need, and then picking a path and going with it. Of course... We do have an option to help you if you think you would like to join somebody, join a program, find a mentor, get somebody to help you with this process. We have something for you. We have a membership for you. It is called The Savvy Author. So just like this show, The Savvy Author program walks you through all of the pieces, but holding your hand step by step. You could show up every year, every week for the next year and perhaps learn everything that you need to know to get your book published on your own, to pull your book together, minus editing, because everyone needs an editor, even editors use editors. Minus those things, you could show up and learn what you need to learn. But if you would like to speed that process up, if you'd like to actually get your book written this year, or since we're halfway through the year, maybe next year, Plan ahead for it. If you are ready to take that next step, the Savvy Author Mentoring Program might be for you. So let me tell you what it is that you get if you're a member of the Savvy Author Membership Mentoring Program. First of all, you're going to get the Brainstorm and Blueprint process. We're going to do it together as a group. Or if you'd like to do it independently, we have a step-by-step 
walkthrough that you could use digitally on your own time. It's way more effective and much more fun to do as a group, so I would love for you to participate in that piece. And then writing and accountability. That's where we all get our heinies in the seats and we all get the work done. So accountability is usually the toughest thing for people who are trying to do it on their own. No one is saying, hey, did you write your words today? Hey, where are you at on your next chapter? There's nobody to bounce ideas off of and no one to do some proofreading for you. So we build that right into our program. Editing and formatting, of course, that comes with the program. Publishing and launching information, how to do it, where to do it, all of the information that you need to make a wise decision for you is all in this program. And then promoting and selling. While promoting and selling is usually not something on people's minds when they start writing a book, it's important to keep in mind ultimately because isn't that the point? If, you, if no one is buying your book, what was the point of writing it in the first place? If no one's going to see the work. Why would you spend the time and money that it takes to produce your book? Super important piece. And so that is all in the mentoring program as well. And then, of course, finally, if you are interested in being in our next class, Right now, the doors are currently closed, but if you would like to join us for the fall session, opens in September, you can hop on the waiting list right now. You can find that waiting list at clararose.com forward slash waitlist. That's clararose.com forward slash waitlist and hop on the waiting list. Now, it's super simple, super quick, and I promise not to send you a bunch of stuff or put you on a mailing list that you're not interested in. You'll get updates about what's happening. If you'd like, you're always welcome to opt into our other lists, but this list is just specifically about the fall session that's coming up. So don't worry, we're not going to spam you. We hate that too. If you're interested, hop on the list at clairerose.com forward slash waitlist. All right, that's it for today. I hope you go away with a better understanding of the difference between co-writing your book and having your book ghost written. And hopefully you can make a better decision about your upcoming project. I hope to see you next week. Have a great time. Bye.